Live from WTO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. Ending U.S. military involvement in Afghanistan now was the right decision. As the Taliban continues its rapid takeover of Afghanistan, President Biden makes his stance clear on how the U.S. should be involved. The situation in that region has an impact on some Americans who served in Afghanistan. Local veterans weigh in on what's happened over the last few days. And a local woman startled after she says a man chased her through a Boone County park. The suspect, known to police, is arrested on unrelated charges. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. I'm Eric Wilson. President Joe Biden speaks out on the violent situation in Afghanistan. Biden stood his ground on the withdrawal of U.S. troops from the Middle East. After nearly 20 years, hundreds of billions of dollars and thousands of American lives lost. The U.S. will continue supporting the Afghan people through diplomacy, international influence and humanitarian aid. The president also acknowledged the outrage people are feeling that Americans and Afghan interpreters were not evacuated sooner. Thousands of Afghans who helped U.S. troops remain in Afghanistan. Biden blames the delay on some Afghans not wanting to leave their country. American troops cannot and should not be fighting in a war and dying in a war that Afghan forces are not willing to fight for themselves. At an emergency United Nations meeting, U.S. Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield promised the country would be generous in resettling displaced Afghans in the U.S. Opinions surrounding the conflict in Afghanistan can be heard across America and around the world. Here in the state line, some local veterans are speaking out. Michelle Rave caught up with the service members today. And Michelle, how are they handling this? I spoke with a local veteran who explains his frustration with everything going on in Afghanistan, telling me he and his fellow comrades feel defeated and that their sacrifices were worth nothing. It does feel like a slap in the face. Larry Eisler is a veteran. He was deployed to Afghanistan in 2008 and served until 2009. He says he feels frustrated by the news the Taliban has gained control over the country. Many people are upset that a lot of us made sacrifices. You know, we, you know, we lost dozens and dozens of people now for nothing. Eisler says he feels bad for the Afghani people, especially those who helped U.S. and coalition troops. Like all units, work extensively with a handful of interpreters. And when you're there for a year and you see these guys every day, you become friends with them. There was one guy who talked about his kids all the time. And, you know, when I deployed, my son was just born. So he and I actually kind of bonded over that. You know, we both had really young kids and, and you know, you, you kind of, you feel bad. You, you feel horrible. The first and foremost danger is the risk of reprisal violence as the Taliban may seek to target, I would say likely seek to target those that it sees as having been collaborators with the United States over the past 20 years. Tez Thurber is an assistant political science professor at Northern Illinois University. He believes the U.S. should stay to help. We have a pretty strong moral obligation to repay the favor that these many Afghans paid to us over the past several decades of putting their lives at risk, working for us as interpreters uh, in, in many different uh, capacities. They had our backs. It's time for us to have their backs. Eisler says he's hoping for the best. When you go to war and stuff and you like to have as many options as you can in case plan A fails, you have plan B. We're on plan Z now. And plan Z is to get everybody out that you can and hope for the best. Eisler says if you know any veterans who served in Afghanistan, make sure to check in on them. Eric? Thanks, Michelle. The search and rescue continues in Haiti. The death toll hit at least 1,300 people following a weekend earthquake. Thousands are sleeping in the streets. The quake destroyed their homes. Tonight, Tropical Depression Grace is expected to bring heavy rain and the chance for flooding and mudslides on top of all of that. Coming up on Eyewitness News at 9 and 10, state line organizations that work in Haiti explain what you can do to help. Rockford police hope the public can help put a man who allegedly stole from a church behind bars. This happened January 25th at St. Edward's Catholic Church on 11th Street. Investigators say Jerry White took an undisclosed amount of cash. He is charged with burglary. A warrant was obtained for White's arrest, but he is still at large. If you know where he is, contact RPD or Crime Stoppers. An early morning apartment fire leaves several people without a place to stay. This happened around 645 at a building on 11th Street near 7th Avenue in Rockford. Fire crews reported smoke 
coming from the second floor. The fire was under control in about 20 minutes. Everyone made it out of the building okay. Flames caused roughly $30,000 in damage. The cause of that fire is under investigation. Three people are chased through a Belvedere Park off the road and through the grass. The man police say was driving the car now faces charges. Rachel Perry talked with one woman involved. Rachel, she tells you she was terrified. That's right, Mimi and Eric. She tells me she has no idea who he is or why he allegedly followed her, but is thankful for a witness who came to her rescue. I just didn't know how to get him out of that situation, us being on foot and him being in a car. A nice day at Belvedere Park turns into a run for her life, Erelise Zavala tells me. I thought he was going to get to us somehow. I don't know if he wanted to run us over, kidnap us. She says a man in a gold car begins following her, plus her one-year-old son and a friend, in broad daylight, driving across grass and sidewalks, possibly trying to reach them. That's when my friend said, look, he's on the sidewalk, cross the road and let's just go. Zavala tells me they ran on a bridge where his car couldn't cross. It bought us enough time for my friend to call the cops and for me to decide, you know, which way is the fastest out of here possible, where to hide. But just in time, she says a couple witnessing the event came to the rescue. They actually stayed with us until we called someone to come pick us up. And Zavala says police began following the man's car as he exited the park. The cops turned around and I guess that's when the chase started. A witness of the chase caught the arrest on camera. Now, Belvedere Police Chief Shane Woody confirms the man arrested is the same man who followed Zavala in the park. I was scared. I, I've heard stories about trafficking. I was really concerned about my son. This all happened Friday afternoon. Now Justin Ballman is being held on charges of aggravated battery to a peace officer, driving under the influence, and fleeing or attempting to elude an officer. Zavala says she has never seen Ballman before the incident. Mimi? All right, thanks, Rachel. It's the first day of school for several local districts. Hundreds of children walk through the halls wearing state-mandated masks. Some parents in Winnebago County disagree with the governor's ruling. As it stands, schools must require all students and staff wear a mask during class or face consequences like losing school status. A group protested outside Hananiga High School holding signs and calling for change. And we need to see their beautiful faces. They need to see each other's faces and see emotion and know how beautiful they are. Parents tell Eyewitness News they will continue to protest masks and have plans to attend upcoming school board meetings. Students eager to enroll at Rock Valley College's Advanced Technology Center will have to wait a while longer. The opening of the new facility has been postponed until January 2022. It was supposed to open this month. RVC blames equipment and material delivery delays stemming from the COVID pandemic. Classes that will be offered at the ATC include CNC machining, truck driver training, and welding. Until the center opens, advanced technology classes will be held at the main campus and Stenstrom Center. A project two years in the making comes to an exciting conclusion. Six benches paying homage to Rockford will be unveiled this weekend. The seating will surround the women's suffrage mosaic tower along the Rock River, which was completed last October. Like the tower, the benches will recognize the 19th Amendment granting women the right to vote. Those behind the project say it will also highlight unique and historic four city landmarks. One of the things that people will notice, and it runs through all the benches, is that the Rock River is at the, at the core of each of the benches and also the trees for Forest City. If you want to be one of the first people to see the benches, head to the unveiling ceremony this Saturday at 2 in the afternoon at the YMCA Riverfront. Now, your first warm weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Candace King. We continue that stretch of nice weather one more day today as we made it into the upper 70s, low 80s, low humidity, mostly sunny skies, just a few flat, fair weather cumulus clouds. And you can tell actually by looking at the cloud cover that we don't have a lot of moisture in the air just by the lack of vertical growth in those cumulus clouds. They're very flat, so not a lot of moisture to really help them grow. Also 
also by looking at our dew point temperatures. Those numbers mostly in the 50s for us and the 60s a little bit further to the south, but still very comfortable for us here this afternoon. We've got one more night where we will see those temperatures in the 50s, but beginning tomorrow night and then through the rest of the week, those overnight lows, those are going to begin to warm. We had a very comfortable stretch here heading into the weekend, almost a little on the cool side where you're able to keep the windows open, leave the air conditioner off for tonight. We're back down to 58 degrees, but after tomorrow, you might need to turn that AC on because we go from the 50s. Wednesday morning, that temperature will jump into the 60s, so that means the humidity will start to go up. Still comfortable, though, with the sunshine today. We're at 80 in Freeport, 81 in Janesville, 80 in Rockford, and 82, the warm spot right now down in the hub city of Rochelle. Our weather watchers, 80 degrees all across the board here from Ken and Belvedere. Ben and South Beloit, 81, and Bob checking in this afternoon on the southeast end of Rockford, also sitting at 80 degrees. High pressure is in control for us here this afternoon, and that will remain our dominant weather feature at least for the next day or two. This will gradually slide to the east and southeast, so we'll actually start to tug up a little bit more moisture here by the middle to end part of the week. So what that'll do for us is give us just a little more cloud cover. I want to take you a little bit further down to the south, though, here in the panhandle of Florida. Tropical Storm Fred made landfall here earlier this afternoon along the eastern panhandle of Florida. See all the heavy rain, the flash flooding taking place around Panama City. They've got tornado watches in effect, which is very typical uh, for landfalling tropical systems. This rain continues along the south and southeast. We don't really see a lot of that, though, get tugged in our direction just because we do have high pressure in control and kind of this trough or this dip in the jet stream that'll help kind of work that a little bit more to the north and to the northeast. So you see that more of a northeasterly shift. It will weaken as it continues to move further inland, becoming and staying more of that rain threat as it continues to move out towards the mid-Atlantic. Then what we look at is Tropical Storm Henry. This just developing here in the Atlantic here. Uh, winds sustained at 40 miles per hour. It's moving to the south and southwest at 7. Central pressure now at 10, 10 millibars. So not a very strong tropical system, but this expected to stay kind of out in the Atlantic and not really have too much of an impact on the eastern seaboard. It does kind of slow things down just a bit, so that might help to keep us a little more on the warmer side as we go through the next couple of days as things kind of get backed up in that jet stream pattern. For us, though, locally, we are going to stay quiet and rain-free. Again, might wake up to a little patchy fog tomorrow morning. Tomorrow, though, we are going to see a bit more cloud cover because a little more moisture comes into the southeast. To our southeast, that's where mostly a few light rain showers will stay. So not expecting any of that to work in here, but you'll notice a bit more cloud cover for the afternoon. And with that moisture, you'll notice the clouds growing just a little bit. We'll increase some of that cloud cover during the morning on Wednesday. Wednesday will come our next chance for an isolated shower thunderstorm. Not a lot of instability. We don't have to be too concerned with severe weather for Wednesday afternoon but just have to keep an eye on the radar for the afternoon and for the evening. We'll dry things out then as we head into the day on Thursday. So down to 58 degrees for tonight. Our winds will stay light from the southeast. Tomorrow we're back into the 80s, 85 for the afternoon. Just a few more clouds, and then you'll notice a little bit more of an increase in that humidity as that dew point temperature climbs into the lower 60s for tomorrow. Wednesday, upper 60s, so feeling a little sticky. Not totally uncomfortable, but a little bit more uncomfortable than where we've wrapped up here these last couple of days. We get close to that 90 degree mark, guys, by the end of the week. Now, the Napleton Sports Desk with Sports Director Scott Lever. We got a glimpse Saturday into the future of the Bears and the Packers, and it looked pretty good. I'm talking about the two young quarterbacks who suited up for their first preseason games, Justin Fields and Jordan Love. Fields was every bit as good as hoped for for the Bears. I'm not surprised. There's more pressure playing in an Ohio State Clemson or Ohio State Alabama college football playoff game and there is playing in a Bears preseason game with nothing on the line. If there's one thing Fields is ready for, it's pressure from high expectations and a rabid fan base. We know he has wheels. He showed those Saturday. We know he's a good passer. He showed that too. And we know he can lead an offense. What we don't know right now is how soon he'll become the Bears' starting quarterback. It won't be this week, but if he turns in two more preseason performances like that, Matt Nagy will have one tough decision to make. As for Love, he wasn't quite as impressive as Fields, but he didn't look lost in his first preseason game for the Packers. Once he warmed up, he got some snaps under his belt and looked pretty good against the Texans. 
His passer rating of 107 was actually a tad bit better than Fields was. Based on what I saw Saturday from these two quarterbacks, I can definitely envision the Bears-Packers rivalry heating up again with plenty of Fields love showdowns over the next 12 to 15 years. Aaron Rodgers is campaigning to get another one of his former Packers teammates back on the Packers. He posted a picture of Clay Matthews on social media over the weekend, along with the words, bring him back. Now, I'm generally not for bringing back old guys who are past their prime for feel-good reasons because of their history. It's about the present. But Matthews might just be able to help the Packers. He's a free agent. He didn't play last year. Two years ago when he played for the Rams, though, he still brought pressure. He had nine tackles for loss, eight sacks, and 11 quarterback hits. That's not shabby. Matthews might be a fit for the Packers as a situational edge rusher in passing downs from time to time. It'll be interesting to see if management caves into Rodgers' demands like they did by going after Randall Cobb. That's my take. We'll be right back. Candace will have a final look at the weather in just a moment. But first, here's a look at what to expect later on News Nation. For one full hour, we'll go in depth on the crisis in Afghanistan. How did we get here and what it means for you at home? Plus, we'll talk to a reporter who's still in the country. That's coming up on Balance tonight, followed by News Nation Prime. Now, here's a look at tonight's Banfield. From the fall of Saigon to interviewing Osama bin Laden before the 9 11 attacks, hear from the man who's seen it all. Pulitzer Prize winner Peter Arnett shares his take on how the world is watching history repeat itself once again tonight on Banfield. Catch News Nation on cable and satellite stations you see here. You can also head to newsnation.com. Skies will stay dry for us tonight. Our first warning interactive radar brought to us by Rockford Auto Glass and more down to 58 degrees tonight, up to 85 tomorrow. A little more humidity as we head towards the middle to end of the week. Could see a few isolated showers on Wednesday. Next chance then will come Friday night into Saturday. Temperatures will stay then in the 80s as we head through the weekend. Some warm. All right, thanks, Candace. And thank you for spending a little bit of time with us. Stay safe.